What's up everyone? I hope you're doing well. In today's video, we're going to look how we can properly and easily keyframe music, audio, and sound effects inside Final Cut Pro 10. Let's jump inside Final Cut Pro, and the first thing we're going to do is drop a song below our timeline. Understanding and being able to keyframe our audio files, regardless of the type of video we are creating, is extremely important. There's definitely going to be times when we want our music, our sound effects, or any audio file to be louder or quieter. The best way to achieve this is by creating keyframes on our audio files. So if we look at the song we just dropped into our timeline, at any moment I can create a keyframe by holding down the Option key and clicking on the audio line. Most of the time I create four keyframes, and then I hold down the Command key while I drag down in the middle of the four to lower or raise the volume of the audio file. This is helpful because one, I can make sure the change of the volume is gradual and smooth. Two, I am only changing the volume in between the two middle keyframes. Three, I can drag the keyframes to be in the spot I desire. And four, after the last keyframe, the audio's volume will continue as it was before the first keyframe. Another way we can easily do this is by hovering over our song once again and hitting the R key. That will change our cursor to range selection and if we drag on the song, we can select our desired range. Once we are satisfied, we can head over to the audio line, and holding down the command key, we can drag to lower or raise our audio levels. You guys can see that once we drag on the audio line, after using the range selection, Final Cut Pro automatically creates four keyframes. We can always change our cursor back to normal by hitting the A key. I like holding down the command key while I drag on the audio line because it gives me greater control. If we don't hold down the command key while we're dragging up or down, the trackpad or mouse is going to be much more sensitive, and it makes it a bit harder to get the audio levels to where we want them. Now there's an endless amount of variations we can create on our audio files with keyframes, and both of these techniques I have just shown you apply to music, sound effects, or the audio coming out of your camera. But I do think the technique of using four keyframes is a great place to start. If we want the change in volume to be fast, we can simply drag the keyframes closer to each other, and if we separate them more, the change will be more gradual. There isn't a right choice as far as to how fast or slow the volume change happens. It really depends on your taste and the tempo of your video. Being able to control our audio levels is especially important when we have a voiceover, and we want the music to be quieter when we're talking and louder once again when we have some cool B-roll or supporting clips. Another little tip that I won't go into much detail in today's video is making sure our audio files aren't clipping. In a very basic definition, clipping means that the audio files have gone above a certain decibel rate to where they become distorted and corrupted. And most of the times you can tell if you hear it. But the best way to really judge this inside Final Cut Pro 10 is by clicking on our audio meter if we haven't already and making sure there isn't any red as we play through our project. Yellow is considered soft clipping and I personally try to avoid yellow, but some people may like how it sounds. The first thing I always do when I drop a song or video clip containing audio into my timeline is hover over the audio line and holding down command, I lower or raise the audio to where I don't see any clipping. A quick tip if you want to better see the waveforms is heading over and clicking on this icon towards the right of our workspace and we can change our clip's appearance. The option on the left is definitely helpful in being able to better see the audio's waveform. Let me be clear that I am not a sound engineer, but after editing with Final Cut Pro 10 for over two and a half years now, these are just some of the things I've learned along the way. Most of the videos I do are for YouTube, and people can watch on such a different variety of devices with different speakers and different headphones, so it is really tough to have the audio sounding 100% as we want it on every single device. So my advice is don't stress, just make sure your audio meters aren't showing red as you're playing through your project, and most importantly, make sure that you are satisfied with the final results. I think a good decibel level to aim for as our maximum for YouTube videos is between negative five and negative six decibels. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if I can help in any way, or if you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. If you like Final Cut Pro 10, photography, videography, I really think you'll enjoy my channel. So if you haven't already and you're interested, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below, ring the bell so you're notified every time I post a new video, and thanks for watching. It really does mean a lot to me. Keep creating, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.